We're glad to know you're still there. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We're being joined by Shola Omolayo, public affairs analyst, to look at the headlines uh, that made it to the front pages of some of our national dailies this morning. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Omolayo. Good morning, Mr. Good morning, Nigerians. Oh. Okay, we're starting with a punch newspaper, even though the headline we're starting with is on all the newspapers that are up for discussion this morning, the Punch, the Tribune, the Guardian, Daily Trust, and all. Okay, but um, the headline here, the major headline here, which is everywhere, is private sector opposition. <coughs> it's about the new ministers. And on the Punch, it says private sector opposition split as Tinubu reshuffles cabinet. Um, OPS backs Tinubu as opposition. CSOs, Nigerians, demand sacking of more underperforming ministers. President fires five a point seven reassigns ten ministers as federal government merges and scraps ministries. So in others, uh, 400, like on the tribune, it says 429 days after Tinubu rejects 45-member cabinet. Cautious optimism, that's on the Guardian, over Tinubu's reshuffled cabinet and uh, changes. And then Daily Trust says Tinubu sacks six ministers, a point seven others. And the writers are reassigned portfolios to 10. Cabinet still over bloated CSOs. Uh, lean government workforce will cut waste. Ex permanent secretary will resist attempt to scrap Niger Delta ministry. That's uh, what they're saying. So uh, let's start. Uh, the ministers have been, some have been sacked. For instance, the humanitarian minister has been sacked officially now. Better I do is out and someone else has come in. Uh, some ministers, like the minister of sports, have become uh, ministers of state in different um, ministries and all that. There's been this rejig. And Nigerians, so many Nigerians are saying it is not enough, not just because uh, the cabinet is still over bloated, but there are people or there are ministries that seem to be underperforming whose names were not on the list. But we'd like to have your take this morning. Um, well, I, I, I don't think um, there's much to say about these um, ministers or their portfolio. Yeah, I mean, for me, the president is the one that employs them. And I just come to know that Nigerians are not really concerned about this um, individual personality that hold some of this portfolio. If he chooses to sack them or keep them or reshuffle them, I think it's his choice. He's the one that employs them. I don't really think Nigerians are involved. We might, if we show, if we should say that we're involved, maybe they were at a time at their parliament to, to, to be Screen. That is the problem of the parliament where politics is well played to the level that we and the populace are not so proud of what they are doing over there. I don't think there's anything to celebrate or to talk much about. Like I, when I had uh, the privilege in talking to us at a time, I said, how many of these ministers can we even recognize them? with the numbers of the bloated offices in which we are talking uh, we get to discuss all the time and the portfolio which they, some of these individual owes. What can you say about any of them? If there's any pronounced ones that you can begin to say Nigerians are really talking about, either they're doing it right or wrong, there are very few in number. We can say, let's start from Wiki, who is the Minister for the Federal Capital Territory, maybe because of the political drama that is being put in play, or some of the activi activities that is going on in a federal capital territory that we see being celebrated on this um, on 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 electronics media or some of the people that visited Abuja recently they might want to celebrate him based on the performance there. Outside that, I think the political angle is what people know uh, the minister for. Uh, I'm talking in person of uh, Wiki himself. Who again do you want to put on on, on your on your table? The minister for road, I mean for uh, mine, or what do you know me for? Dave um, mine, yes. If not because, uh, if not because of the uh, contract that is holding them for taking up from uh, Lagos to Abuja, what can you really say? 
if not for if not recently they are just talking about some of the rules that has been abandoned like the rule from uh, uh, Lagos to Abeokuta. You can't even say uh, the Lagos Ibadan Express Road has highly been perfected, where they themselves has come to say they want to really add value to the road by putting light. What have they done? Uh, the drainage system of the road, I don't think is that serious, I don't know. So, who again do you want to talk about? Is it the Minister for Power, in person of Adela from uh, on your state? In fact, most of the time, it talks to see majority of Nigerians getting annoyed. Their policies are not working. In fact, they have even turned to their own employer. They, uh, they, 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 the agent of this power supply ought to be their, their, their laborers. But the laborers are not, not the one dictating the, posi the position of the minister. Their, their, their orders, their authority is not binding. You can see, and when he talks, you just imagine what kind of an office is he holding. So, we do want to talk about the only person that I can say is highly being celebrated is the one of uh, uh, Minister for is it for uh, internal affairs or external affairs? Yeah. I don't Ojo. know which offices some of them hold now. Ojo, yes. And the way I don't know. Yes, they, these are the ones that we can say you hear their name at all. What a minister from uh, what kind of resources? Do you know anything about it? What a minister for a Greek? These are the ones that are so close to the neck of the people. What do you get to know about them? So if you are changing anyone, I just believe it's part of the party should they are still showing. I don't think there's thank God. Okay, let's see the Minister of Education that has been toying with some of, with the life of our children. Uh, also using the, the parent as pawn in this game. You understand? I don't know. Maybe they are just using that to couch the the threats that is on ground that some of these um, um, electorals are saying they will go on strike. Who knows? Maybe they just use that to cow to, to couch the the threats for um, a breakdown in the institution. That's why they change the other person and bring in this one. We don't know what this guy is going to do. I don't just see anything that, uh, that celebrating about this ministry. This, uh, uh, offices that we are talking about. You drop one, you break one, you reduce, but the, the brutal uh, offices are there to consume money. All you get to know is when they blow their sparring and you see them coming to party with convoys of uh, human soul just to show power. I don't think these guys are able to work. Hmm. Okay, well, uh, some people even thought that. Um uh, as we have always said, that Minister of State does not even make sense. I don't know if it is constitutionally uh, captured, but uh, why are we even having that? And he still went ahead and after removing some minister, ministers from the ministries that have been scrapped or something, now made them ministers of state somewhere else. And most of the people that were brought on, uh, even ministers of state in various ministries. So I don't know why this keeps happening all the time and why it must be. I said earlier on that let's even talk about the one you say we are saying we don't even need relation concern about because it's the one that employs them and he knows what he wants to use them for. But one of the ones that are very relevant that are well known to us, even as a young as a young child, you know, that's what I'm asking about. I'm talking about you see, I don't mention all these state ministers. I'm talking about Bible was like hey, minister for is it for health or whatever? Education, what do you know about them? Minister for, for water resources, what do you know about them? Minister for agree, labor and productivity, what do you know? These are the ones that they will know their names should be on everybody's lips. What do we know about these ones? What is their function? The health sector, what can you say to date? To date, there's no, there's no form of emergency. You come into office, you find a decay a decay sector. What do you think you can do to send a signal that we have we have another person on board? You see, I keep saying this. Before the government of uh, Buari lost it, when Buari first came into office between 1915 and 16, between 1915 and 16, the first six months, if not nine months of Buari in office, I can tell you for free. Visit any police station. By the time you, are, you don't even know who you want to go and meet, maybe you want to go and build someone out, 
or you want to go and meet the police or you want an issue to discuss with the police and you visit any of the police station. By the time you start within the next five, ten minutes, is it that the DCO of that of, of, of that station or the DPO comes out? Because it is obvious that most of them joined the, the, the force when they were much younger. So they were having the mindset of that same spirit of the leader they knew in the 83, 84, and down the line, um, 85, 1985, before he was pushed out of office. That was the sense they had. So they, 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 when you visit that the station then, you see respond, respond. The police at the counter wants to answer you and check you out. But after a year or two, they just thought, this is an old party. They, they, they don't care anymore. You understand? So the position of leadership threw down the line. We we're expecting that personally. I was thinking that with all the noises that we are making that this government, I know it, being a leader is a great tax. You understand? But for the president of I accepted the fact that don't pity me, I call for this job. I think that when he went for that, his coming back will be another shaking. At least just pretend that you are fainted. Don't die, just pretend that you are fainted. <laughs> you think that this person is already dead. You know? But nothing like that. Personally, I felt that as the president is going to be coming back, there's going to be a shaking. Even the ministers, all the ministers are even scared. I can tell you. The ones that may not be afraid, maybe just one or two that doesn't really care that I can go back home. I have my business. But a majority of them, I have this in mind. The problem is not about the money. The problem about is about uh, uh, ego that I'm a minister. They are, uh, once you're a minister or any of these offices, you have some purpose to yourself. You are the security that is guiding you. You don't pay for it anymore. You understand it? That is what they were guiding. And you can imagine how some of them will be sleeping in their houses and be telling themselves that I thought uh, there's something big coming and I was disturbing myself. And they will celebrate their prophet or man that would have told them that don't want to die yourself. The worst they can do is to change their offices. And that is it. Yeah. And then. They are talking about they do. They do is to be. It's on record. He, she will, we know that there is no how she will be leaving, you know. So there's something big, not big deal. You carry water resources, go meet and grief. What's the difference? It's not the same energy they will disappear. Hmm. And then the, the a minister in the uh, the previous administration, Sunday Dari, has been brought back. He was minister of sports, and it seems as if he did something so wonderful that now he has been made a, a special advisor to the president. And uh, Nigerians are asking the question: Were there no other people that could have brought in fresh blood? See, in this game of politics. These are the little ones that the president can work with, I will tell you for free. There are things that you can't say here on air. There's a lot of betrayal that he has seen within his system for why he was growing this ambition to become president. Being the president, the president of this country never started this game today. He has been in, the, in this, I think this is the first president. This is the first person after a long while that I will see he had an ambition of becoming a president, and he walks towards it. Unfortunately, while he was up walking towards this, um, this, this goal, some of the people he was, he, he was bringing up there never understand the target. I think they were so scared and worried that what if it doesn't work? I want to believe that some of them are aware that he has this notion. And along the line, there's a lot of betrayal. There's a fallout from all of his soldiers that they were grooming up together. And remember that he was a senator in 1992, you know, the power of Archer came, if you remember. Yeah. And as a senator, he came up again to become the governor of the state. And ever since he becomes the governor of, uh, of, of, of Lagos State, I want to believe that he has this ambition of going beyond the office of the governor because he has experienced the, 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 the the, the, the banter of, uh, of the parliament. So the next place he wants to look up to is to become the president of this country, which he, he perfected, and the calculation was so right when he brought in, uh, uh, the, when he brought in um, Buhari, which is so obvious for anybody. So 
Whatever you are seeing now, I want to believe that he's just working with the remnants that he met, he met along the path that he could work with. Not the same old soldier that ought to have joined him in this, uh, in this range of political uh, uh, struggle that we find ourselves in. But it's so unfortunate that we Nigerians are not so smart to begin to prepare ourselves. See, this, like I told you, if you remember, this president, <laughs> That's the way we're going to take power. Not in 2007. They should just go and sleep. He knows the game. He knows the people. Who is coming to challenge him? Majority of the people that, is, that will come to challenge his office and criticize. Why are the people criticizing? Which, who are these opposition that they've never sat down together? He knows them. He knows them deeply well. And they know him. But they don't know him as much as he knows them. That's why nobody will just come up and say something. They will just say, they don't believe in it. I don't present it to anybody. What, are they, what other name have they presented to say that you should have done this? If you have removed this person, you will have done this, you will have done that. Remember that Sheikh Usani made a statement some time ago when he was speaking in one of the uh, gardens they had sometime. He said, Look, you taught us, you taught us this game. They don't deny the back of the day. And you know, Sheikh Usani is not a PD, I mean, it's not an uh, APC person. You know that. And he said it so clearly that you taught us this game. And you need to understand some of the children that we grew, the, some of our children that got this training, they are in the prison in the name of SS. Find the way and find the way of releasing this, these guys. So when you listen to the to the language of these people, either they are in the opposition or they are in the uh, It's like when a person used to do, used to take up uh, uh, on, on open chat, telephone, I mean, those days you, you have a deal with the president, maybe end of the month, I think the last Saturday of the month you do this. You see a person don't call me. If he asks you, where, you are, where are you calling from, you say, I'm calling from Biba. He says, okay, which area in Biba? Just made a statement. He said, look at you that, I'm talking, that you are talking. Go and meet so so person and ask him what happened at this period. We, 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 are game, we are playing with the, with the best chess player. The chess player, they know when to, to, to drop your royal, your royal, your royal uh, status and when to, to bring down your prince before they eliminate your king. They know this game. That's why you did. My brother, you don't enter that one. <laughs> okay, uh, let's leave politics for a bit and um, uh, do something else. Uh, a worrisome headline is talking about diphtheria. On the Guardian newspaper, diphtheria killed 1,191 persons in 17 months, says NCDC. Uh, I was just looking at also the, the death rate of uh, COVID-19 in Nigeria. It was uh, put at 3,105. Fifty-five. Uh, that was the COVID-19 that we were all talking about. And now the diphtheria is killing silently in 17 months. That's just uh, over a year. It's killing so many people. And we have had like uh, 1,191. And it gives me worry. I don't know what you feel about that. Because it seems as if, if it is not global, the world is not talking about it. We don't seem to take it seriously. Look, I, I said, I just asked a question. Who is the Minister of Health? Did I not just ask that question? Do you know the name of the Minister of Health? Either the Vishogu, either the one of the past or now. Which hospital can you even visit now and say this is an hospital? There are some general hospital that is already dead. It's a general hospital, but it's dead. It's like a clinic. So what do you expect? The only, you will just have few states where the health sector is managing, managing, maybe by the state. If the state does not so care about his people, he will maybe just do something to to, to keep the health, the health of, our, of, of the state. I will tell you for free, Lagos State is trying, and it has always been trying. You know, you know the numbers of people that visit Lagos outside Lagos State? Do you know? The population of Lagos State alone cannot be well managed by our medical team. Thank God, if not for Fashola, during the time of uh, Ebola, if 
not proportional with the strong policies. You know, when, when I was thinking coming up to this program, I just felt that I think Fashola should be somebody that when these ministers and whoever board they are bringing up should come up, they should go under a tutorial class under Fashola. Either you like him or you hate him. He did well. He did well. When the issue of Ebola came in, he, 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 he put up all his arsenal to make to contain to contain that the crisis that would have entered it. Thank God again for Sawulu, who stood his ground as well. You understand, during COVID, I know I don't really believe that was in Germany. I'm one of the other side, you know. I don't believe that was the But let's discuss it. Let's discuss it. Let's discuss it. What is it? You want to mention anything? Just check who is in charge. Who is in charge? Mm. Nigeria is so dull now that everybody, including the, the people who want to be in charge, the minister or whoever, we are now living on 1,000. Our life now is 1,000, 1,000, 1,100 naira or 1,150. It's like you just wake up. That 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 spirit of 1,000 just brings you down. Like that is what we are working with. This yeah. minister has not just there. They are not making a show. When, when you talk about when you talk about is, whoever is in charge of whatever you're complaining. When you talk about whoever is in charge of what you're complaining, yes, um, we also have this uh, uh, headline, the, the same the Guardian, and it says. National Bureau of Statistics says 85.2% of households use estimated billing. Uh, I, just, I just looked at this because you talked about whenever there's a problem, look at who is in charge. And now the minister of uh, PA was not touched by this axing of people, uh, by this uh, removal of ministers or reshuffling them. So it seems as if he's doing a, a very good work. But this is what the NBS is saying. 85.2% of households use estimated billing. And this is in this time that Nigerians have been have been put in a caste system or something, some segregation, some 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 according to how wealthy you are. You have a band A, you have a band B, which is never heard of. And when people were expecting that, you let me use the light according to how I am capable of, and then. You, you, sh you cannot just share me into band A or band B or band C. But this minister was not touched. Even when now the NBS is saying 85% of the people are using estimated bill, which is crazy. You know that our leaders, most of them are not honest. And I want to plead, I, I want to use this time in pleading with the media. We don't have a strong media like we used to have again in those days. I'm sorry to use this word either the electronic media or the print media. We don't pick on all of these people. This is when we were, they were coming up with this band A issue. They told us that the band A is meant for a class. We argue it though that are they trying to use, they will be cutting off some of the lights or reducing the consumption of the lower class because there's no middle class anymore. We will be uh, reducing the consumption of the lower class of power to extend to band A. They set us up. It was openly said. And we criticized him. And for me, I was laughing and said, This people then will keep everybody. Yeah, we've lost the audio of uh, Molayo, uh, Shola Molayo. But uh, we, okay. we will take an powerful injection. It's a bypass injection. Now we are not even talking about a people who will want to do. What's going on? Um, can you hear me? Hear me. Okay, go ahead. Please hold on. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, like, like I said, they set us up. And now, they don't care. Look at what the minister said at the time. He said, you notice that people are not complaining about the power cost anymore. Why? Because petrol is high. Can you believe that? Well, what, what there are still some, there are still to say. <laughs> there are still some, there are still some local government that doesn't have light. They don't have light. No transformer. These are things that is owned to the people. The people bought it. 
You ask them, the transformer they want it, you will not ask them to give it out to you. No compensation, nothing. But you want to you want to take their money now. What kind of a system is this? What kind of a system? So when it comes to the issue of bad A bad C, we don't enter. Now, the government said, okay, they are giving us what? Gas. I mean, yeah. you can remove your car instead of using petrol, you'll be using gas. Is that not? Mm -hmm. Or sir? Sir. That's the way you buy ten thousand naira petrol from Moto. Now you go carry five hundred and six or six hundred thousand. Go remove that. Uh, it's really worrisome, but trust me, uh, like you were saying, the media is not as strong, but trust me, uh, some of us cried out really loud, only, almost on a daily basis talking about this band A and B and all that, and we gave opportunities to people who were also having divergent op um, opinions about this, and we talked and talked, but it has become something like a norm now, no matter how what much you shout, because so people will not go on the streets. People will not go on the streets. Their quotation, when they are speaking in the past, can you replace their, their quotation back? If you, you can talk, but how do you bring their quote, some of the statements they made before now? Mm. Have we, do we try to remind them of their statement or any time we come across them to ask them questions? Trust me. It's not just about talking. And one, one other, other example of, of things that um, show the impunity of government is, uh, for instance, the road from, uh, from Lagos to Calabar, the coastal road that was not budgeted for, and it just sprang up. And the road is still going on right now. And we talked and talked. And we saw that even the money being spent for the coastal road from Lagos to Calabar is more than the, the road, a coastal road that moves from South Africa to as far as Egypt uh, in Nigeria. We talked about it. But um, it seems as if uh, talk is cheap. So well, they need more action. And then when you take action on the streets, you are locked up. And uh, if they eventually give you bail, they give you bail of uh, 100 million naira for someone who is saying that my life is so difficult for me, I cannot feed, and I'm t asking you to do something better. And then you're gagging the press and all that. So some people have come up with the argument that this democracy is not even working for us, even though we say that um, other forms of government may not be as good as, as democracy, but it's not working for us. Maybe it is high time we looked at our democracy and tailor it in such a way that it will suit the African continent. Uh, you see, the, the word democracy is not a, a, the, democracy is not a problem. The black man has an issue. We agree that the, the woman God colonized us. Then it is not even the world that started colonizing us. We started colonizing ourselves. If you remember, we started building empires and destroying hamlets and villages just to, 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 to show power within ourselves. What you have seen now, like, it's like we, we have an invasion within the black barriers, especially the Euro barriers. Let me tell you this. When you don't know history, you destroy, you destroy your future. I keep saying this. When you don't have history, you destroy your future. The, 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 the comic guys or these stand-up comedians will say, or normally in this part of the world, Nigeria, other tribes believe that the Yoruba man is a coward. That's their thinking. And I want to say, okay, because that is what they know and what they see. But they don't even have history. What brought Yoruba together is war. War that brought them together to stay together by force. One force, one, one, one lord goes to invade the other hamlet or, 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 or town so that it can hold that authority for reality. That's what they do. Until that is why in the Yoruba race we had the Kiriji war, the uh, 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 Yisabi war, a Kitikwarapo war. It's about self enslavement before even the Oyiboke, the white man. That is why today, after the Yoruba has come together, they now begin to match causes with causes that there must be no war, there must not be, dis there must not be disagreement between us. After they have changed their losses. You begin to hear proverb 
that it is the beginning of a fight we get to know. You don't know the ending. If there is a lot more, we say you don't know where. The parable of what tied them together begins to come up and it not join into their, into their system. But other tribes were not so. And I don't want to disturb some of the tribe that I know that how they came together even diffused them from creating leadership that they could respect. But you also know in the far north, we know of the Fulani war. Who were the people that were able to, to, to resist the battle? It's the Jukun. If you don't know some of these things, when you are having leaders in position, you don't even know how they are operating because you don't know where they are coming from. You bring up a leader in this part of the world, which is the Yoruba race, they will ask, who is his father? Who is his mother? They want to check things out. These ones can only escape, even not because of the policies that have bastardized many things, but it's still in place. So when you come to the whole nation Nigeria, the people who are coming to offices, where are they from is the question. Mm. What have they done before that is productive? Somebody is coming to contest for the office of a councillor or a, a House of Assembly member. He will never go to a CDA meeting. But six months at the time of election, he will not be coming out uh, 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 like, like a, a, a zombie. If they want to back drainage, and you will see him come inside. And, and we don't know this one is this nice. They are criminals in hiding. <laughs> and when they get to power, we begin to celebrate them. They pick up an idea which they have no knowledge about. They don't practice it on their streets. In fact, you can't even visit them at home and go ask questions. We we'll call these people to power. What do you expect of them? All right. What? Well, we, we, we hope our, our recruitment process will improve uh, so that we, we, we get the right people in power so that we can uh, have a breath of life as it is. Let Nigerians breathe. Let everybody breathe as it is. But Mr. Omolhayo, this is where we have to wrap it up this morning. We'd like to thank you uh, for a fiery morning, I must say. Yeah. West Nigeria. West Nigeria. Nigeria, yes. Thank you so much. We'll be talking to Mr. Shola Omolayo, a public affairs analyst, on the papers, on the front uh, pages of some of these papers, what were the headlines. And we got a few of them. We couldn't finish them. We encourage you to get your newspapers or go online and read. Know about what is happening in your country so that you can be able to, to choose how to help and make our country better. We'll take a short break and when we return, what we'll be looking at is the statement of our president, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, saying choose between petrol at 1,000 Naira per litre or CNG at 200 Naira. Okay, let's take that break now.